UFV, Fred, because that's become popular and people are looking to dip their fingers in it. What base of the undesignated fund balance do we need to keep in place in order to shore up our bonding ability? At the minimum, it's 5% is a recommended sum for the uh, by the Department of Revenue Administration for the state of New Hampshire, and the maximum is 17 percent. Right now, we're about six and a half percent. Sort of put it in, in terms I think people can understand. Um, we collect taxes twice a year, and we have to run a 30 million dollar corporation during the course of the year. Um, those taxes have first called by the school departments and by the Hampton Beach precinct mm -hmm. and by the county yeah. which means that we spend almost one half of our money that's collected uh, during the course of the year through the tax collector's office to run those organizations they have first call we do not collect all of our taxes we, we run somewhere between two million and two million five hundred thousand dollars in unpaid taxes at any one point in time mm -hmm. so that's the way the board has this structured, that's the minimum we have to keep in the un on a designated fund balance or the unassigned fund balance, depending on how you want to term it. Um, if we were to commit um, what was mentioned here tonight, we'll be running exclusively on tax anticipation notes. There won't be any question in my mind about that. There'll be no cash available because we'll strip the account. Uh, right now, we're running somewhere around five to six million dollars in that account, uh, give or take, depending on what the audit comes up with. Uh, it could be as high as seven million dollars. It was six point six million yeah, last time it's, I looked. Yes, yeah, it's, it's kind of fluctuating <coughs> around, and, and there are things that are going to be adjusted by the auditors on that. That's what funds the town. That's what keeps us running in between tax collections. Right. The majority of the money we collect in taxes. Uh, Let's talk about this time of the year, for instance. Right now, we're running on the school collections, which were made in, in December. We also have to pay the schools out of that. Yeah. So we're not borrowing any money because we have this surplus that we, we, we sit on, and we, we use that to fund things. Um, perhaps a, a good example would be the uh, replacement of the sewer line on, on Lafayette Road. We started that without any bonding at all. And the only reason we were able to start it and not have to wait for bonding is because we have a surplus. Yeah. That surplus cash is being used for that. If we had to wait for money to be appropriated and we had to wait for the collection of those dollars, we wouldn't be starting it until this spring. That would be a year and a half after we, st we decided that we needed to have it done uh, because we would have no money. We just have nothing to expend. Well, I can remember your comments about the situation that you found when you took over as manager in oh. 2007. It's interesting. And that is a, a cautionary tale. I get very nervous when too many fingers are going into that undesignated fund balance. We could get hurt severely if the fund balance were dropped to too low a, too low a margin. Mm -hmm. Would you explain, please, to the public what you explained to me uh, before the meeting started? Because I have had questions from the public uh, when we're going to do the temporary sewer line uh, while we're getting ready to do the actual construction. People are saying, why are we renting? Can't we just buy that pipe and then use it? So if you would. The pipe is designed to lay on top of the ground, not to be buried in it. This type of pipe. This type of pipe. And it's a single wall, continuous pipe. It is welded together. There are no joints for the entire length of it. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not the type of pipe that we would normally use. It's for a very special occasion. In this particular case, it's a temporary and emergency pipe that needs to be taken out in the winter time because yep. it will not, yep. it cannot be frozen, otherwise it will break. I appreciate that because people have more, they say a pipe is a pipe. Not so, really. <laughs> well, but that's why. That's what they said when they put the tuck the line in the marsh. Yeah, yeah, well, that's true. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So appreciate uh, that. Iron Thank doesn't you. like salt water. No. no. <laughs> the, the marsh pipes, which would come under old business, you know, we had people in here talking about physical responsibility and all that, and using, you know, a lot of people saying using the undesignated fund for this project, yeah. which would be fiscally 
irresponsible if we did that. I think the people are speaking wrong. I mean, right now, as you said, we don't go to the tax anticipation notes. We don't have to borrow any money, true? True. Because we have an undesignated fund. Right. We also get, in the last few years, very good reports from the auditors, I believe, that we're just about 100% in compliance with everything. And one thing, because <coughs> we're keeping that 8%, so, I mean, some of the comments that were made tonight are physically irresponsible, not being prudent in watching our money. And I think that the board has been prudent in that aspect, and I think we should stay prudent. And I think it's because the town manager has pushed us to make sure that that undesignated fund stays at the appropriate level, which I think is, is, is very important. And then there was another comment made that we don't need to have the pipe in the winter. Well, we do, right, because of excessive high tides or storms. The storms are what hurt us, hurt us this year in the winter time, and we needed both we, pipes. We were running 10 million gallons of material per day yeah. into the into the treatment plant, up up to that sum. Uh, it depends upon how you look at the day, yeah. but you know, on the average, five million gallons over uh, on an average day over three over three days is a lot more than the plant's supposed to take. Yeah. So that that water is coming in from the ocean. And, and we have to treat it, and we, we did. Now, I'm not, we didn't do anything wrong. We treated every bit of it, and we discharged it, and everything it was discharged in accordance with the rules. But we can't do that forever. Right. And I think, I think everybody has their own opinion, which is fine. But we pay engineers to make studies. We pay engineers to give us information. And we should listen to the engineers when they give us the information. So I think we, I, I mean, I, I know we've been physically responsible. I wanted to say I agree. I know I wasn't here. I wasn't active in the town, I guess you call it, when Mr. Welch came on board. But he told me of his experience with the yeah. unassigned fund balance oh. when he first got here. Yeah. And having that security, whatever it is, I, I want to say it's what we say between five and six million, somewhere around there. Yeah, it's, it's about as high as eight and a half million. It's, it's down somewhere between five, six, seven million dollars, somewhere in the. We had, don't have the audit finished yet, so we don't know exactly what it is. Right, but simply draining that for a yes, I would say that these pipes are definitely an emergency, is not responsible. You know, that's like booking a month vacation and, you know, not making sure you have anything in case something happens. And that's what the town does, and I think that uh, if you luckily with the support of our legislators okay. and our state senator and former state senator, we're going to have a bill heard, or it's already partially been heard, or it's, the Senate's hearing it next week. No, the Senate will be hearing it, on, I believe, on Wednesday. They'll be voting on it on Wednesday. There's no hearing because of the lateness of the filing. Uh, it appears that this week on Wednesday, the Senate will be hearing this bill on the actual, actual debate, and they'll be voting on it. And uh, at that point, if they pass it, it will go over to the House of Representatives for their requirements and if they pass it it'll go directly to the governor for signature and i would also like to add that if anyone's ever looking for expenses to decrease that will never happen what we have to find is additional revenue i agree with one of the things that mr zanoy said and that it, i think we made a mistake not to have done looked further into this when it happened before or did we did we do a study with an engineering study then on on like what we did with when they made the determination that the uh, pipe was brittle. You talk about the okay. You talk about the marsh pipes. <laughs> yes, the first time it happened. Okay, no, we did not hire an engineering firm to go in and do an extensive study as we did this time. Yeah, so okay. it appears to me that's where the big mistake was made here. Could I be. thought about it and thought about it, yeah. and to me that's the way it looks. It could be, and uh, at that time there was it was a lot of money to do it. Mm -hmm. And we, we, we coughed it up and did it this time because we, we mm -hmm. felt it had to be done. Uh, and we found out a lot of information about those pipes that we did not know before. Um, we should have done it before, but hindsight's perfect. Yeah. It is in every case. And I understand that. But I, I do feel I, that was one I was interested to see that that was his first point. And I've been thinking about it, and I agree with that. I think, I think the reason it was not done before when the second breach occurred, you could literally take the pipe and tear it apart with your first yeah. finger and thumb. Mm -hmm. you, couldn't, you couldn't do that with a sledgehammer on the first break. Mm -hmm. So there was something radically wrong with the pipe that, that's in there. It, yeah. And this pipe was not covered with plastic, apparently. 
uh, completely covered with plastic. So that meant it was interchange or intermixing with salt water and brackish water all the time. So there was severe deterioration to it. I had to uh, I had to read it twice. But what I walked away with from the engineering report was that the best part of the pipe is the concrete liner. And I looked at the picture of the liner, and it looked like a piece of Swiss cheese with all the holes in it. And if that's the best part, then we were in serious trouble, but we did not know it at the time. Mm -hmm. And I wonder if some of the, um, if some of the expenses for the pipe could come from the unassigned fund balance. I mean, there might be some things that could be done maybe start a little sooner or whatever. Uh, you know, we, maybe, I don't know, I'm just throwing that out there. We've looked at it uh, and we may be able to apply some money. Uh, one of the things that we committed to do was to apply a million dollars to decrease the tax rate this year from the unassigned fund balance. Mm -hmm. uh, if we're going to commit the money to this pipe, then um, <coughs> that won't happen, so the tax rate's gonna go up. Mm -hmm. Don't want that to happen either. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have to somehow, well, we've got to wait till we see the balance of the, of the audit report. We need yeah. to know where that is in, in very specific terms. And then we, we will try to designate how much we can afford to take out of there and still we have enough money to reserve to, to, for our operating capital for the schools in the town. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But if there is any way that uh, j some of the partial expenses could come out of there at the beginning and maybe to s maybe make it so that the rental of the overland pipes would be less or something like that. I mean, I think it's something that we could look at. You, you know, it's it's not up to me, mind. it's up to you folks. We figure this, my best guess is between a million and a half and $2 million for the temporary pipes. Mm -hmm. This is the, building these new pipes is not a mm -hmm. two or three month job. It's yeah. going to be postponed for part of the winter for the hard, the hard part mm -hmm. and then take up again in the spring and in the spring, you're going to have to put those overland pipes in again. That's the pipe that, yes. that's the part that makes me most uncomfortable. So I think if we pay a lot of attention to that and really take a look at it and see if there are any other ways that uh, things might be slightly different or yep. more cost effective. We have to study that closely. Yep. So that would be, uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, if that's a possibility, just to keep our eyes on that.